In physics, special relativity is the generally accepted and experimentally well-confirmed physical theory regarding the relationship between space and time. In Einstein's original pedagogical treatment, it is based on two postulates that the laws of physics are invariant in all inertial systems, and that the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers, regardless of the motion of the light source. It was originally proposed in 1905 by Albert Einstein in the paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. The inconsistency of Newtonian mechanics with Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism and the inability to discover Earth's motion through a luminiferous ether led to the development of special relativity, which corrects mechanics to handle situations involving motions nearing the speed of light. As of today, special relativity is the most accurate model of motion at any speed. Even so, the Newtonian mechanics model is still useful as an approximation at small velocities relative to the speed of light. Special relativity implies a wide range of consequences, which have been experimentally verified, including length contraction, time dilation, relativistic mass, mass energy equivalence, a universal speed limit, and relativity of simultaneity. It has replaced the conventional notion of an absolute universal time with the notion of a time that is dependent on reference frame and spatial position. Rather than an invariant time interval between two events, there is an invariant space-time interval. Combined with other laws of physics, the two postulates of special relativity predict the equivalence of mass and energy. As expressed in the mass-energy equivalence formula E equals mc2, where c is the speed of light in vacuum, a defining feature of special relativity is the replacement of the Galilean transformations of Newtonian mechanics with the Lorentz transformations. Time and space cannot be defined separately from each other, rather space and time are interwoven into a single continuum known as space-time. Events that occur at the same time for one observer could occur at different times for another. The theory is special in that it only applies in the special case where the curvature of space-time due to gravity is negligible. In order to include gravity, Einstein formulated general relativity in 1915. Special relativity, contrary to some outdated descriptions, is capable of handling accelerated frames of reference. As Galilean relativity is now considered an approximation of special relativity that is valid for low speeds, special relativity is considered an approximation of general relativity that is valid for weak gravitational fields, i.e., at a sufficiently small scale and in conditions of free fall, whereas general relativity incorporates non-Euclidean geometry in order to represent gravitational effects as the geometric curvature of space-time. Special relativity is restricted to the flat space-time known as Minkowski space a locally Lorentz invariant frame that abides by special relativity can be defined at sufficiently small scales, even in curved spacetime. Galileo Galileo had already postulated that there is no absolute and well-defined state of rest, a principle now called Galileo's principle of relativity. Einstein extended this principle so that it accounted for the constant speed of light a phenomenon that had been recently observed in the Michelson-Morley experiment. He also postulated that it holds for all the laws of physics, including both the laws of mechanics and of electrodynamics. Postulates Einstein discerned two fundamental propositions that seem to be the most assured, regardless of the exact validity of the known laws of either mechanics or electrodynamics. These propositions were the constancy of the speed of light and the independence of physical laws from the choice of inertial system. In his initial presentation of special relativity in 1905 he expressed these postulates as 
the principle of relativity, the laws by which the states of physical systems undergo change are not affected. Whether these changes of state be referred to the one or the other of two systems in uniform translatory motion relative to each other, the principle of invariant light speed. Light is always propagated in empty space with a definite velocity, speed, c which is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body. That is, light in vacuum propagates with the speed c in at least one system of inertial coordinates regardless of the state of motion of the light source. The derivation of special relativity depends not only on these two explicit postulates, but also on several tacit assumptions, including the isotropy and homogeneity of space and the independence of measuring rods and clocks from their past history. Following Einstein's original presentation of special relativity in 1905, many different sets of postulates have been proposed in various alternative derivations. However, the most common set of postulates remains those employed by Einstein in his original paper. A more mathematical statement of the principle of relativity made later by Einstein, which introduces the concept of simplicity not mentioned above is, Special principle of relativity. If a system of coordinates k is chosen so that, in relation to it, physical laws hold good in their simplest form, the same laws hold good in relation to any other system of coordinates k, moving in uniform translation relatively to k. Henry Poincaré provided the mathematical framework for relativity theory by proving that Lorentz transformations are a subset of his Poincaré group of symmetry transformations. Einstein later derived these transformations from his axioms. Many of Einstein's papers present derivations of the Lorentz transformation based upon these two principles. Einstein consistently based the derivation of Lorentz invariance on just the two basic principles of relativity and light speed invariance. He wrote, The insight fundamental for the special theory of relativity is this. The assumptions relativity and light speed invariance are compatible if relations of a new type are postulated for the conversion of coordinates and times of events. The universal principle of the special theory of relativity is contained in the postulate. The laws of physics are invariant with respect to Lorentz transformations. This is a restricting principle for natural laws. Thus many modern treatments of special relativity base it on the single postulate of universal Lorentz covariance, or, equivalently, on the single postulate of Minkowski spacetime. From the principle of relativity alone without assuming the constancy of the speed of light one can show that the spacetime transformations between inertial frames are either Euclidean, Galilean, or Lorentzian. In the Lorentzian case, one can then obtain relativistic interval conservation and a certain finite limiting speed. Experiments suggest that this speed is the speed of light in vacuum. The constancy of the speed of light was motivated by Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism and the lack of evidence for the luminiferous ether. There is conflicting evidence on the extent to which Einstein was influenced by the null result of the Michelson-Morley experiment. In any case, the null result of the Michelson-Morley experiment helped the notion of the constancy of the speed of light gain widespread and rapid acceptance. Lack of an absolute reference frame. The principle of relativity, which states that there is no preferred inertial reference frame, dates back to Galileo, and was incorporated into Newtonian physics. However, in the late 19th century, the existence of electromagnetic waves led physicists to suggest that the universe was filled with a substance that they called ether, which would act as the medium through which these waves, or vibrations, traveled. The ether was thought to constitute an absolute reference frame against which speeds could be measured, and could be considered fixed and motionless. Ether supposedly possessed some wonderful properties. It was sufficiently elastic to support electromagnetic waves, and those waves could interact with matter, yet it offered no resistance to bodies passing through it. The results of various experiments, including the Michelson-Morley experiment, led to the theory of special relativity. 
by showing that there was no ether. Einstein's solution was to discard the notion of an ether and the absolute state of rest. In relativity, any reference frame moving with uniform motion will observe the same laws of physics. In particular, the speed of light in vacuum is always measured to be c, even when measured by multiple systems that are moving at different velocities. Reference frames, coordinates and the Lorentz transformation. Reference frames play a crucial role in relativity theory. The term reference frame is used here as an observational perspective in space which is not undergoing any change in motion, from which a position can be measured along three spatial axes. In addition, a reference frame has the ability to determine measurements of the time of events using a clock. An event is an occurrence that can be assigned a single unique time and location in space relative to a reference frame. It is a point in spacetime. Since the speed of light is constant in relativity in each and every reference frame, pulses of light can be used to unambiguously measure distances and refer back the times that events occurred to the clock. Even though light takes time to reach the clock after the event has transpired, for example, the explosion of a firecracker may be considered to be an event. We can completely specify an event by its four space-time coordinates. The time of occurrence and its three-dimensional spatial location define a reference point. Let's call this reference frame S. In relativity theory we often want to calculate the position of a point from a different reference point. Suppose we have a second reference frame S, whose spatial axis and clock exactly coincide with that of S at time zero but it is moving at a constant velocity v with respect to s along the x-axis. Since there is no absolute reference frame in relativity theory, a concept of moving doesn't strictly exist, as everything is always moving with respect to some other reference frame. Instead, any two frames that move at the same speed in the same direction are said to be co-moving. Therefore, S and S are not co-moving. Define the event to have space-time coordinates in system S and in S. Then the Lorentz transformation specifies that these coordinates are related in the following way. Whereas the Lorentz factor in C is the speed of light in vacuum, and the velocity V of S is parallel to the x-axis, the y and z coordinates are unaffected, only the x and t coordinates are transformed. These Lorentz transformations form a one-parameter group of linear mappings, that parameter being called rapidity. There is nothing special about the x-axis, the transformation can apply to the y or z axis, or indeed in any direction, which can be done by directions parallel to the motion and perpendicular, see main article for details. A quantity invariant under Lorentz transformations is known as a Lorentz scalar. Writing the Lorentz transformation and its inverse in terms of coordinate differences, where for instance one event has coordinates and another event has coordinates and and the differences are defined as we get these effects are not merely appearances, they are explicitly related to our way of measuring time. Intervals between events which occur at the same place in a given coordinate system. These time intervals will be different in another coordinate system, moving with respect to the first, unless the events are also simultaneous. Similarly, these effects also relate to our measure distances between separated but simultaneous events in a given coordinate system of choice. If these events are not co-local, but are separated by distance, they will not occur at the same spatial distance from each other when seen from another moving coordinate system. However, the space-time interval will be the same for all observers. The underlying reality remains the same, only our perspective changes. Consequences derived from the Lorentz transformation. The consequences of special relativity can be derived from the Lorentz transformation equations. These transformations, and hence special relativity, lead to different physical predictions than those of Newtonian mechanics when relative velocities become comparable to the speed of light. 
The speed of light is so much larger than anything humans encounter that some of the effects predicted by relativity are initially counterintuitive. Relativity of simultaneity Two events happening in two different locations that occur simultaneously in the reference frame of one inertial observer may occur non-simultaneously in the reference frame of another inertial observer. From the first equation of the Lorentz transformation in terms of coordinate differences it is clear that two events that are simultaneous in frame S are not necessarily simultaneous in another inertial frame S. Only if these events are additionally co-local in frame S will they be simultaneous in another frame S. Time dilation The time lapse between two events is not invariant from one observer to another, but is dependent on the relative speeds of the observer's reference frames. Suppose a clock is at rest in the unprimed system S. The location of the clock on two different ticks is then characterized by delta x equals zero. To find the relation between the times between these ticks as measured in both systems, the first equation can be used to find. For events satisfying this shows that the time between the two ticks as seen in the frame in which the clock is moving, is longer than the time between these ticks as measured in the rest frame of the clock. Time dilation explains a number of physical phenomena, for example, the decay rate of muons produced by cosmic rays impinging on the Earth's atmosphere, length contraction The dimensions of an object as measured by one observer may be smaller than the results of measurements of the same object made by another observer. Similarly, suppose a measuring rod is at rest and aligned along the x-axis in the unprimed system S. In this system, the length of this rod is written as delta x. To measure the length of this rod in the system S, in which the clock is moving, the distances x to the end points of the rod must be measured simultaneously in that system S. In other words, the measurement is characterized by delta t equals zero, which can be combined with the fourth equation to find the relation between the lengths delta and x and delta x. For events satisfying this shows that the length of the rod as measured in the frame in which it is moving, is shorter than its length in its own rest frame. Composition of velocities Velocities do not simply add. If the observer in S measures an object moving along the x-axis at velocity u, then the observer in the S system, a frame of reference moving that velocity v in the x-direction with respect to S, will measure the object moving with velocity u, where the other frame S will measure. Notice that if the object were moving at the speed of light in the S system, then it would also be moving at the speed of light in the S system. Also, if both u and v are small with respect to the speed of light, we will recover the intuitive Galilean transformation of velocities. The usual example given is that of a train traveling due east with a velocity v, with respect to the tracks. A child inside the train throws a baseball juiced with a velocity u, with respect to the train. In non-relativistic physics, an observer at rest on the tracks will measure the velocity of the baseball as u equals u, plus v. While in special relativity this is no longer true, instead the velocity of the baseball is given by the second equation, u equals. Again, there is nothing special about the x or east directions. This formalism applies to any direction by considering parallel and perpendicular motion to the direction of relative velocity v. See main article for details.